Section 15, subsection 1 of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission Act 2004 stipulates that a person who willfully provides or collects by any means, directly or indirectly, any money by any other person with the intent that the money shall be used for the act of terrorism, commits an offense under this act and is liable on conviction to imprisonment for life. Good evening and welcome to The Eagle. My name is Aisha Gambari. Thank you for joining us on another interesting package of the program. Presenting with me is Aisha Mohammed. Hi Aisha. Hello. Hello viewers. It's nice being with you on this week's edition of your exciting program, The Eagle. CC will get you anywhere, anytime. On our lineup today, the acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Ibrahim Magu, an assistant commissioner of police, has called on all staff of the commission to brace up for fresh and greater challenges in the onerous task of combating corruption. He gave the charge at the former handover ceremony held at the EFCC headquarters in Abuja, which saw him take over from Ibrahim Lamarti as the chairman of the agency. A prosecution witness has told Justice Adeni Adimola of the Federal High Court Abuja that the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC has received over five petitions against former Imo State Governor Ikedi Ohakim. Ohakim was arraigned on Wednesday, July 8, 2015, on a three-count charge bordering on money laundering. And still talking about the prosecution of former state governors, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has arraigned former governor of Benue State, Gabriel Suswen, and his finance commissioner, Omar Dachi Okolobia, before Justice A.R. Muhammad of the Federal High Court, sitting in Meitama, Abuja, on a nine-count charge of conspiracy, bribery, abuse of office and obtaining by false pretense. Just as the trials of his former Gombe state counterpart, Anju Mogoji, and that of Taraba state, Jodi Inyame, are also proceeding before various courts across the country. Please stay tuned as we take another short break. The program continues right after the break. Don't go away. Hey, hey, hey. The acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Ibrahim Magu, an assistant commissioner of police, ACP, has called on all staff of the commission to brace up for fresh and greater challenges in the arduous task of combating corruption. He gave the charge at the former handover ceremony at the EFCC headquarters in Abuja. Kamil Gebi has more. At exactly 11.46 a.m. on November 11, 2015, the much-awaited guests walked into the executive chairman's conference hall where management staff and heads of unit of the commission had waited patiently looking forward to another historic event in the life of the commission. Former Chairman Ibrahim Lamordi was to hand over the helms of affairs of the Commission to the new Acting Chairman Ibrahim Mustafa Magu. Lamordi became the Chairman of EFCC in November 2011 after taking over from Mrs. Farida Waziri, who was removed by former President Goodluck Jonathan a few months before the end of her four-year tenure. 
The event started with an opening prayer. <laughs> After the prayers, Lamorde set the ball rolling. Uh, we are here to witness yet another uh, handing over ceremony. Uh, I think I'll be doing this uh, for the second time. I did that in 2008 uh, to Mrs. Waziri, and I'm doing it today to our brother and colleague and friend, uh, Mr. Magu, who is all you are all familiar with him, is and all staff of this place, pioneer staff. He has been here from uh, the inception of the commission in 2003. Uh, we all left and then came back uh, again. While describing his time in office as fulfilling, Lamorde said that change is the only permanent thing in life. There is nothing permanent in life other than change. Every day we live, we encounter something new. The day you are born, you prepare for your death. The day you occupy an office, you prepare for the exit from that office. If people don't leave office, people will not get into office. So, but the most important thing is, we are lucky this is coming from within the commission itself. This is a rare opportunity. Not all organizations that have the opportunity of getting succession taking place from within the organization. The, the beauty and the good thing about that is that you have people who have some institutional memory of the place. You have people who know what is going on in the place and they don't need to learn the ropes. So they just take off uh, from day one because they are part and parcel. Describing Ibrahim Magu as a brother, colleague and friend, the former chairman urged members of staff to give the new acting chairman all the support that is needed to move the anti-graft agency forward, saying only collectively can the commission record the desired success in the war against corruption in Nigeria. Everybody knows me, they call him by various names, the popular one is general. So um, the general is taking over. I want to implore each and every one of us to give him the maximum support to enable him to succeed. Uh, if he succeeds, the, the glory goes to each and every one of us. If something goes wrong, yeah, he may be blamed as a leader, but each and every one of us carries part of the blame. He condemned the act of those involved in smearing the image of the commission, saying those who engage in such actions are apparently oblivious of the far-reaching impact of their actions, which goes beyond the commission and the individual. There are certain things that have been coming out of this organization of late, and it is very wrong and dangerous. People deliberately inflicting injury to themselves. When you attack, especially when the basis of the attacks are baseless, have no factuality whatsoever, they don't serve elements of truth in them, you are destroying the organization. The anti-corruption czar, who thanked the entire management and staff of the commission for their support while his tenure in office lasted, said the commitment of the entire staff of the commission contributed greatly to the success of his administration. I believe whatever little achievement we have made is because each and every one of you supported the process. And this is why I started by you giving that support to him. So I thank you most sincerely for that support. He congratulated the new acting chairman, Ibrahim Mustafa Magu, after which the handover notes were signed by both parties and handed over to the new head of the anti-graft agency. Asserting his readiness to succeed in running the EFCC, Magu, who like Lamorde is a pioneer staff of the agency, expressed absolute commitment to executing the war against corruption. 
In his inaugural statement, Magu said the challenge before him is a huge one that requires absolute commitment, going by the strong reputation of the commission since inception. I am today faced with the mixed feelings. I have that instinctive happiness for being the one chosen among an array of senior colleagues and competent contemporaries to take the mantle of leadership of this very professional institution. I also feel something heavy around my shoulders occasioned by the burden of leadership and expectations. This call to duty is no mean challenge. It's a large task that requires absolute commitment. I'm humbled and challenged by this choice. He promised to keep the legacies of the founding fathers and past leadership of the commission alive by upholding and improving upon the achievements so far recorded in the commission's quest to rid Nigeria of all forms of economic and financial crimes. I resolve not to falter on the well-established tradition of patriotism, dedication, courage, and fearlessness. We will take this responsibility with utmost seriousness that it deserves. The general, as he is fondly called, said there is no better time to ginger up the anti-corruption crusade other than now, when the country is currently going through some economic challenges due to the fall in world oil prices, and more importantly, when the number one cardinal objective of the current administration is zero tolerance for corruption. Indeed, there is no better time to ginger up anti-corruption campaign than now that we are faced with economic downturn and the attendance sharp decline in government revenue. There is therefore the need to make sure that whatever is gotten for common use do not end up in private pockets. Again, to attract foreign investors, that will complement the income of the government. Magu commended Lamordi for his leadership and wished him the best in his future endeavors. He also commended the management of the agency for having worked assiduously to ensure the sustenance of the objectives of establishing the EFCC. He sought for the support of the Commission's staff across Al-Qaeda, saying the desired success in the anti-graft war can only be achieved if they work as a team. Magu also pledged to be a listening leader and one that will be responsive to staff welfare and development, adding that while the Commission concentrates on doing the work, indiscipline and other unruly conduct will not be tolerated amongst staff. We will also keep an eye internally. I will not tolerate indiscipline nor condone abuse of office or act of corruption. The Commission's Secretary, Emmanuel Adegboega Aremo, on behalf of the entire management and staff of the Commission, thanked the former chairman, Ibrahim Lamordi, for the smooth working relationship enjoyed while his tenure lasted. He also pledged the support of all staff for the incoming chairman. I'm going to say on behalf of the management, that yes, I'm going to work with you. With fairness, dedication, and whatever we want the work to be done, after the signing of the handover notes, members of management and staff posed for a photograph with the outgoing and incoming chairman before bidding a farewell to Lamordi. Thank you for staying tuned. A prosecution witness has told Justice Adeni Adimola of the Federal High Court Abuja that the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC has received over five petitions against former Imo State Governor Ikedi Ohakim, who was arraigned on July 8, 2015, on a three count charge bordering on money laundering. Rolake Odofin Jolayemi reports. Or Hakim is alleged to have made a cash payment of over $2 million for a parcel of land at plot number 1098 Cadastral Zone A04 Asukuru District, otherwise known as number 60 Kwame Nkrumah Street, Asukuru, Abuja. While answering a question by the Defense Counsel, Awa Kalu, SAN, 
The prosecution witness said the commission received over five petitions against the accused person. The witness, who is a senior detective superintendent, SDS, with the EFCC, also told the court that some of the petitions against the accused person were received from Alliance of Redemption and Destiny Organization, aggrieved Imo state citizens, citizens for Imo economic security, and 27 people who are all signatories to a petition from each of the 27 local governments in the state. When asked by the defense counsel if he made any effort to confirm whether or not the groups were registered, the witness said there was no need to do that. He further told the court that all the petitions were investigated. However, when the defense counsel asked for copies of the petitions in court, the prosecution witness told the court that the petitions were in the commission's files. The prosecution counsel, Festus Keyamu, raised an objection to the request, saying that the defense counsel had failed to do the proper thing as required by law. According to Kiyamo, and I quote, My lord, in a criminal charge, you cannot ask a witness to present copies of petitions in court. It is wrong to harass or ambush a witness to present copies of petitions against an accused person in court. If you really needed them, you should have applied for them or told me. If you want them and you tell me, I will bring them. End of quote. The defense counsel then prayed the court to ask the prosecution witness to give him copies of the petitions. Responding, Kiyamo told the court that he would give copies of the petitions to the defense counsel within 24 hours. In his ruling, Justice Ademola said the prosecution was right in his submission, adding that if the defense counsel needed them, he would have asked the prosecution to give them to him. The case was adjourned to December 7, 2015, for continuation of trial. Rolake Odofi, Jolaimi, reporting for The Eagle. Cheers, cheers. <laughs> I got a telephone call. Anytime I close my eyes, yes. I see dead people chasing me in my sleep. My Jehovah, my God. Is it possible for someone to become restless just because of his past? Nevertheless, unless you kill somebody dead, then the spirit will be haunted you. Hey! Was you all contractors? I embezzled all the money for the roads that are now death traps, killing people every day. I approved the supplies of fake drugs. On pipe on water. I right. embezzled the money at the fear chief. You are supposed to first have a, a special man that you don't do of EMCC. I chose people who are doing with money to trouble other people with money. EMCC. As soon as they capture them, threat to prison. Jail. Yeah. Yeah. Jail. Jail. Ah! Are you uh, Life are not just about acquire wealth. Making money. When other people are going to die of hunger and neglect. Be careful. EMCC, I watch. EFCC will get you anywhere anytime you're still watching the program the eagle and still talking about the prosecution of former governors the economic and financial crimes commission efcc as a reign former governor of benue state gabriel suswan and his finance commissioner omadachi okolobia before justice a.r muhammad of the federal high court sitting in metama abuja just as the trials of his former Gombe State counterparts, Denjum Maligoji, and that of Tarabo State, Jolie Inyame, are also proceeding before various courts across the country. Kamel Gebi once again has the report. Suswan, in connivance with Okolobia, allegedly diverted proceeds of the sale of shares owned by the Benue State Government and Benue Investment and Property Company Limited for personal use. The offence is punishable under Section 15.3 of the Money Laundering Act 2011 as amended in 2012. The accused persons pleaded not guilty to the charge preferred against them. Following their plea, counsel to EFCC Rotimi Jacobs SAN asked the court for a short date to commence trial. Jacobs said, and I quote, While we are not opposing the bail of the accused persons, I urge your lordship to give us two days possibly in December, for trial to commence, end of quote. However, the defense counsel, Ahmad Raji, prayed the court to admit the accused persons to bail on self-recognition, citing section 165, sub 1 of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act. Justice Muhammad admitted the accused persons to bail in the sum of 100 million naira each and one shirty each in like sum. While fixing December 8th and 9th, 2015, for commencement of trial, Justice Muhammad ordered the accused persons to be kept in EFCC custody 
pending the fulfillment of the bail conditions. And now to the trial of a former Taraba governor, Julie Nyame, who is being prosecuted by the EFCC for allegedly stealing state funds to the tune of over 1 billion naira during his tenure as governor between 1999 and 2007. The trial, which started in 2007, continued before Justice Adebukola Banjoko of an FCT high court sitting in Gudu, Abuja, with the agency stating that the statement of the accused was voluntarily obtained. The witness, an operative of the EFCC, while being led in evidence by the prosecuting counsel Adebisi Adeni from the chambers of Rotimi Jacobs SAN, said he was one of the investigators that took the statement of the accused sometime in July 2007. Answering further questions during cross-examination by the defense, Sikiru Adewoye, representing Latif Fagbaimi SAN, the witness told the court that the accused statement was voluntarily rendered and obtained in a professional manner. According to him, EFCC as a law enforcement agency has great respect for professionalism and would not do anything to either undermine people's right or the rule of law. His testimony brings to a close the prosecution's case in respect of the trial within trial, setting the stage for the defense to present their witnesses. In another case involving Anjuma Goji, a former governor of Gombe State and serving senator, a prosecuting witness has told the Federal High Court Gombe that the ex-governor forged the resolution of the House and collected a 5 billion naira facility from Access Bank. The witness, who is a former clerk of the Gombe State House of Assembly and one of the three witnesses called by the prosecuting counsel, Wahab Shitu, told the court that the resolution did not emanate from the Gombe State House of Assembly and that he was not a signatory to it. The witness, while testifying further, said, as the admin officer of the House, he chaired the management committee of the House, kept the record of the House proceedings and maintains its records. However, the court had to cut shut the proceedings and adjourn for further hearing owing to the fracas that ensued as suspected political thugs invaded the court premises and disrupted proceedings. The thugs also launched attack on the accused persons and others outside the court premises during which the second accused person, Aliu El Nafati, and one other person was seriously wounded. In the brawl, vehicles were vandalized, including that of the defense counsel, Paul Erokoro, SAN. The attack forced the presiding judge, Justice B. O. Qadri, to adjourn to November 25, 2015. Justice Qadri condemned the attack and directed both counsel to do a report on what happened, which he promised to forward to the chief judge, Federal High Court, for necessary action. Goji, alongside four other accused persons, are being prosecuted by the EFCC on charges of conspiracy, money laundering and embezzlement of funds belonging to the state government. FCC will get you anywhere, anytime. Welcome back. Justice E. S. Chuku of the Federal High Court sitting in Meitama, Abuja, has admitted as evidence a compact Dix CD tendered by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, ELCC, in the ongoing trial of Imaogbo Esu Inti. Golden Agu is standing by with the report. The compact disc was tendered to the effect that the statements of Imabong Akon Esunte, an accountant with the Nigeria Prison Service, and five others being prosecuted by the agency were voluntarily rendered. Esunte Olukolade Olabamiji, a businessman, Mohammed Abdukader, a banker, and their three companies, Royal Mall Nigeria Limited, Transferers Ventures, ID Integrated Petroleum, a standing trial on an 11-count charge bordering on conspiracy, forgery, abuse of office, and money laundry. It will be recalled that the accused had, through their counsel, Titus O. Asholu, S.A.N., challenged the admissibility of their statements tendered by the EFCC on the ground that the statements were not voluntarily obtained. The trial within trial, which commenced at the last sitting, October 6, 2015, saw the principal witness, Sini Omar, denying taking the statements of the accused persons under duress as he told the court that all the statements were given voluntarily and conducted in a professional manner. At the resumed hearing, 
Counsel to EFCC, Larry Peters Asso, led another operative of the commission in evidence. The witness told the court that he was an operative attached to the Digital Forensic Unit of the Forensic Science Laboratory of EFCC. According to him, the confessional statement of the first accused, Esu Nte, was attested, and while it was done, a decision was taken to record the attestation using a Galaxy tablet. He told the court that after the attestation was recorded, he was assigned to move it from the Galaxy tablet to the laboratory computer and bond it into a compact disk in order that it could be tendered before the court. He further stated that the computer functions adequately well and that it is used for day-to-day -day storage of all recorded or analyzed data. However, Ashaolu S.A.N., counsel to the accused persons, objected to the admissibility of the disk, which he said failed to meet the conditions of Section 84, Subsection 4 of the Evidence Act. He argued that it is required that a certificate be produced to certify the type of computer used, how and where it was produced, the serial number and the brand. All he said must be contained in the certification before the CD can be tendered. He urged the court to reject it for failure to meet the conditions precedent for its admissibility. Responding, Asso stated that Section 84, Subsection 4 of Evidence Act, cited by the defense, does not apply where the person who generated the document is called as a witness to lay a foundation for tendering of the document. He argued that the witness had complied with the provisions of Section 84, Subsection 2 of the Evidence Act, adding that the essence of tendering the compact disk is to show that the accused statements were voluntary. Also testifying was another operative of the EFCC. The witness stated that he came across the accused when he was called by Simi Omar to attest to the confessional statement of the first accused, which was taken on May 8, 2014, at 1400 hours. He told the court that the first accused, Esunte's statement, was voluntarily rendered without any form of harassment, intimidation, or duress, as the statement was done in his presence and one of our counsel from Ashaolu's chambers. The attestation was tendered and admitted in evidence as PW2A. Justice Chuku has adjourned the case to December 8, 2015, for continuation of trial. Golden Ago reporting for the Ego. And that brings us to the end of this week's edition of The Eagle. We hope you continue to tune in as we bring you interesting updates about the activities within the EFCC. Please don't forget to send your feedback to us via the eagle at efccnigeria.org or search for us on Google Plus at Official EFCC or Official EFCC NG at gmail.com. You can also like our page on facebook.com forward slash official EFCC or follow us on Twitter at Official EFCC. And to watch our programs and other activities, please log on to youtube.com forward slash official EFCC. My name is Aisha Mohammed. Good evening. I'm and I'm Aisha Gambari, hoping to see you next week. God bless Nigeria. <laughs>